Uh, today I've travelled to Sittingbourne in Kent. I've come to Playlight Limited, come to meet with Tony Bess, who's one of the uh, directors here in the company. Bought the business, in fact, with his colleague Darren Cordell back in 2004, moved here in 2009 and in the last three years has invested a million pounds in capital equipment in order to aid their production and uh, satisfy their customers' demands. We're going to go and find out why some of that investment was put towards uh, some new Brother Speedio machine tools. You've got to stick around for this video because this is fascinating. I'm with Tony Best, who's a director here at Playlight Limited. Uh, Tony, the story is the machines that we've got behind us here. These are the Brother M140, uh, the X2 versions of Speedios. Uh, firstly, how long have these two machines been here? Uh, we've had these machines for about a year now. Um, we bought one, uh, worked out very well, so then we invested in a second one six months later. So what's the difference? I mean, you've got, you got a pretty fabulous machine shop here, and I know you, you bought this company out uh, a few years ago, but these are a bit of a step change, aren't they, these machines? What's the difference with these compared to some of the other technology you've got? Uh, so these were a solution for us. We've quite a lot of work with turning and milling requirements. With these Speedios, we can do both those disciplines on the one machine. So the machine is a five-axis machine in centre, but you have that turning functionality as well. Is that a good way of summarising it? Yeah, yeah, exactly that, exactly that. And the, and the great thing about it is you don't suffer with any concentricity issues, your blending is perfect, your tolerances, you really can confidently quote very accurate work and know the Speedios will solve those problems for you. So you quite aptly said it, it was a solution for you rather than just buying a machine tool uh, that, that hits the deck in your machine shop. Oh, absolutely. And also the reduced number of operations, uh, improved setup times using the milling back heads, uh, back ends. Uh, yeah, it's just a really good, really good solution for us. You go from job to job quite frequently as well, don't you? So I believe you're using Lang's quick change chucks in order to do that as well. Yes, of course. Yeah, We put the pull studs on the back of our chucks, our vices, our fixturing, even our billets. So again, on and off. Um, we're very similar to a lot of companies nowadays. We do prove out one job during the day and run a night shift. So once parts go into the inspection, we get a second job up and start running that while we're waiting for inspection. We don't lose that time during the, during the night where parts haven't cleared inspection, we can drop onto another job and keep the machines going. And your volumes are quite, are they, are they low, are they high? Where, where are they? Uh, there's a mixture of our volumes, but generally we are more low end. If we're making 200 parts, that's quite a big, a big uh, batch for us. And when I, when I first arrived, I was trying to challenge this solution by looking at it and thinking, actually, some of the parts you make, would they not be better being machined out of bar on a turning centre with milling function rather than on a five axis machine with turning function. But you quite you, you answered those points uh, quite well. Can you just go over those on camera for us? Yeah, certainly. So with a turn mill machine, you are trying to get a, t a milling capacity on a lathe. You're limited to the number of tools you've got on your turret. Your driven tooling um, heads lack, lack real rigidity, get a lot of vibration issues. With this machine, you've got a, a milling footprint with the capacity to add turning features. You're putting all your tools in on milling back ends. Your setup is a lot quicker. Uh, we suffer no issues with accuracy or, or tolerances. What, what I also like about these, and I know you mentioned this to me, they're very small, aren't they? But if you compare them to maybe a, 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 a lathe with milling function, you've got two machines here, you've got two spindles. You've got about 48 tools probably collectively between them, total milling function, and you can almost put your arms around them. Well, you can if you're a big guy. Yeah, that's how White House sold us the machine. The, the guy promised me I could cuddle it, which I didn't believe I could, but actually you, you literally can. They're 1.3 metres wide, um, so we've literally got two machines where we would normally have only the one, so two spindles, as you say. Is there any restrictions on the turning? I mean, have you any idea how fast the chuck will rotate? Compared to a lathe, you might have 5,000, 6,000 RPM. Is this about the same or is it a lot less? Uh, the, the, the table will spin up to 2,000 revs. Um, for us, we haven't had any issues with that. Again, it's specific to the job. You know, some jobs are, are better suited to a lathe, but for our, our challenges, this, this machine is 
coming up to. And, and that milling side of things, is it a fast BT30 machine as well? It's one thing having the, the adaptability to make a part in one here, but, but it also needs to be productive. Are they quick? Are they nimble? Do they move fast? Yes, the machine's very quick. It does 16,000 uh, uh, RPM. The, the, the speed, the, the rapids are very, very quick. The tool change, you literally almost can't see it tool change sometimes. Yeah, very quick, very productive machine. You adapt your milling style, your, your approach is more trochoidal milling. Um, so you're not taking big cuts, a lot of small cuts, but the machine works very, very quickly. Typical Japanese style of machining. Was there a big, big cur learning curve as well here with trying to get your head and engineer parts slightly differently? So think, actually, now I can do it in this way rather than that way? Uh, yes, very much so. Again, getting used to the BT30, getting used to our uh, cutting strategies. There was a little bit of adaption, but again, we have found the machines have become very productive with the help of White House in, in showing us the ways to atta attack jobs. Uh, as a summary, is there any, any way you could summarise how much of an impact these machines have had for your company? You know, have they increased your, your output, your, your productivity? Um, have they returned on their investment very quickly? Is there any way you could kind of summarise that for us? I think I'd sum it up by saying that these machines have made us more competitive where components need turning and milling. We've reduced our setup costs. So consequently, let's reduce our unit price and we have one more work on the basis of buying these two machines.